there you go. Yeah, okay. sorry, I'm doing this virtually. I've been in meetings, so I, I didn't have time to come over, but um, but I am happy to be no able to introduce uh, Dr. Lu Kai today. Um, he is a, I think most of you may know him, but he is a tenured professor with appointments in the Department of Pediatrics, Radiation Oncology, Pharmacology, and Toxicology. And he's also the director of the Pediatric Research Institute with the Endowed Children's Hospital Foundation Chair for Pediatric Research at the University of Louisville School of Medicine. He is um, very active in research and focused uh, primarily on developing new approaches to prevent and treat chronic diseases from a variety of etiologies, including environmental toxicology, um, sorry, environmental toxicity, obesity and diabetes, and using toxicological and mechanistic approaches. Um, he has a long history of successful funding and many, many um, publications. One of his, I think, significant contributions is he has a long history of mentoring um, researchers, including myself, I'm, I'm happy to say. Uh, uh, to become successful researchers. So with that, I will turn it over to you. Thanks, Sarah, for your uh, introduction. And uh, yeah, I'm a great pleasure and uh, be here. And uh, thank you very much for your coming in person and also the virtual. And uh, since last year, and I have been uh, here for third time. And before I, I introduced uh, some work in my lab regarding diabetic complication and also some like environmental uh, like, uh, toxicity and um, the mito and uh, in fact our health issues. And so today I will focus on some uh, another angle for the radiation biology. And I think your work work on the clinical your is a, a no better and no more than me. But uh, I still want to share some information is different and from some angle and uh, discuss with you. Yeah, so the, oh, I don't, oh. just move your mouse in and it'll, it'll do that. Oh, okay, thank you. So I do not have any uh, conflict interest in it and disclose. And uh, so for today's talk, I want to uh, divide the following part. And uh, I will be very like, uh, briefly introduce radiation and the dose and uh, how uh, radiation kills the uh, uh, radiotherapy for cancer and also how the radiation cause our problem for code, for the radiation sickness. And then focus on the uh, low dose radiation part. And uh, you know, and the radiation in the whole the, like, uh, spectrum of the electromagnetic field and that is uh, like the highest energy and the highest the frequency. And so that is in the far right angles. So you can see the whole the picture in there. And uh, how radiation and uh, like damage our like, uh, like system. And uh, from the very small things and from the item, uh, atom and the, like uh, molecules, when like uh, any uh, particle goes through the uh, atom and, uh, and they will hit the, like uh, some electron from the inside to move to outside, but not off from the atom. So that causes just excitation, so only generate some heat. And but if they have more power, and when they hit the atom, make the electron is off from the atom. So that causes the ionizing um, like a, the, uh, action. So that makes the, the atom or molecule not stable, and this. Uh, unstable molecule will go around to try to steal or to grab other, like uh, the electron from other molecule, so the materials. So that is uh, make the, the radiation easier to uh, cause the damage for our cells. But in the cells, and the most part, the most uh, like uh, important target is the DNA for the radiation biology, because radiation have a Strong penetrate, not like a chemical. You need to go to membrane and go to cytosol, and then probably change, and then go to nuclear. Not that fast. And radiation can direct go to the DNA, cause the DNA break, causes the cells and die and the damage. So that's why radiation field 
predominantly think about the uh, DNA damage. So that is uh, like a whole picture for the radiation causes a problem for uh, like uh, our life. And this is just uh, within the one uh, like a second, and the any particle goes through the atom and generates some excitation, generates some heat. But if they go too strong and make the some electron off and become the free radical, and uh, but that is still probably not damage for us because our body have enough antioxidant free radical uh, free radical scavenger. A lot of the chemical or compound can neutralize the free radical, donate the electron, give the free radical, make them stable. So in that case, won't have any damage. But if continue, they will cause DNA damage. Once they are DNA damage, they have a different fate. And uh, we have a DNA repair enzyme system. So that they have called the, like a uh, recombinant or like a homologous DNA repair different kind. We can repair the DNA and make the DNA are not damaged that much. And if we repair, no damage. But if that repaired, but sometimes is like the repair, not that perfect, they hold it like a muted, and they still have a genomic, and the material and the integrate, but just like a wrong sequencing. So they call the DNA mutations. The cells can survive. And so they go to the, like the, if they happen to our like liver, and the kidney, so that we call it the somatic cells. That probably and just live there and uh, occasionally cause some cancer because the cells probably are limited by apoptotic pathway. And uh, so not 100% cause the cancer. But if that mutation go to the germ cells, happen in germ cells, it cause the, like a genetic infect. But uh, sometimes the cells have more DNA damage. The cells cannot be survived to cause cell death, necrosis, fibrotosis, and right now there's so many kinds of cell deaths. So in that case, the cells, and uh, if the small, or like a small amount number, so that probably won't cause some like a dysfunction for the our organ. So for example, if liver, then no problem. Couple of cells die, no problem, we can generate. And, but uh, if too much, mass of the cell dies because some the organ dysfunction and uh, generate some phenotype. So that is uh, based on what kind of cells and what kind of damage that from the one second, minutes, day, week, and uh, the whole life. So this is roughly radiation causes the uh, biological impact. So we use radiation and uh, the powerful cause cell death to do the cancer therapy. And uh, for example, and this is like a, is an animal, we have the transplant uh, tumors. And they have tumors, and we use radiation to try to kill the tumors. And in that case, we want to give the high dose, kill the, all the tumors. But you can see, and that different kind of tumor, you have different dose to cap capacity to kill that the tumors. But uh, for the in vivo in the body, Actually, we cannot do that. 100 degree, that will be because we will kill the person, not kill the tumors. And because of the radiation in the normal, like a system, normal tissue, they will cause damage, they will cause your like organ dysfunction, cause radiation sickness. So for the radiation therapy, so they have to look for the normal tissue tolerance dose. So that normal tissue can tolerate, have very small like damage, but uh, we can kill the, the tumors. So that's why we use fraction radiation to kill the tumors, because the tumor cells have a rapidly faster cell cycle. They keep growing. And each cell and at the S phase cycle is the most sensitive period for the whole cell cycle. And the normal cells, when you have some damage, they are slowly growing to repair. But the tumors did not just repair, they just keep Growing. So we are using fraction, probably kill 100 tumor cells, damage three normal tissues, and when they get held another cycle, second hit, and kill another 100 tumor cells, and only hit three uh, normal cells. So in that case, we kill the, uh, the, the cancers. So based on that, we need to talk about the dose. But the dose, they have like three levels. And usually, probably you read about that is a region. And that is for the radiation in the air as a physical dose. 
And the, when we talk about the radiation called the red or green, that means a sub of sub to go to your body, to go to the our like uh, any biology and go to our body as absorbent dose. We call green and uh, mid green or uh, sometimes they call it red, C green. And uh, when they c calculate the like uh, your organs difference sensitivity and the more comprehensive, they call the seven and or ring. So that is kind of the three layers in air in your body. But is it count of the different kind of radiation, high LUT or low LUT? So that is a kind of the uh, equivalent dose. So uh, like I mentioned, the radiation can kill tumors, but also can damage our normal systems. So what dose can cause the normal uh, system have problems? So for example, they have a dose dependent uh, phenotype. So about higher than two degree to less than six degree, and they usually cause the marrow hemopoietic system, cause the blood and the formation system problem. So that can show the phenotype. And because that is a, our marrow system is the most sensitive tissue for radiation. And so lower dose and show the first marrow system. But that is, a, you lose some like a lymphocytes, lose some marrow cells, you are not immediately die. Because that what can happen, that it just causes your inflammation and infection. So that is chronic. So you can see that happen and like they have like a, a one to three weeks uh, lactant phase. So that is in, in time. But if the dose increased, not only damage the marrow system and also cause the secondary the sensitivity organ, intestinal and the system. So that causes the whole intestinal system broken in, in uh, like a mucosa inside and broken bleeding and the diary and you can see you can show, see the uh, like a phenotype like a digestion system so that happened in, in uh, quickly in the uh, within the one week but uh, in that case and uh, not that easy to uh, survive because the whole intestinal system uh, you cannot uh, transplant so that is why, why uh, this start from the like a uh, this degree, this level, we call it the GI sy uh, syndrome, that most times they will die. And, uh, but in the first degree, and the only bone marrow system, we gave them treatment, uh, take care, and gave them even bone marrow transplantation, this like, uh, victim can be rescued. But if the dose are too high, go to 20 or 30 degree, you can see that. Immediately destroy your uh, like, uh, blood and the system and the vascular system, neuron system. So you can see that within a couple of minutes, the people and the world die. And so that is a radiation causes a symptom and really, really depend on the dose. So which organ, which system cause damage. But that is, is very high. And even like a, for the cancer therapies, we, we, we won't use that high and already. And uh, so how about the lower dose? And uh, for example, from one, and they have some mi uh, minus uh, like damage, and the 0.5, and uh, you can just see uh, some like a uh, uh, marrow system called uh, uh, suppression. And if lower 0.3, and only and 0 0.3, 0 0.2, only some like a uh, reproductive system have dysfunction. But uh, from 0.1 to 0.2, so that means 100 milligree or uh, like a 200 milligree, they only have some chromosome aberration and the DNA damage, but that probably won't have some uh, geno like phenotype symptom because uh, our body has strong limited system and removes the cells with bad and uh, uh, genomic instability, and so that is a kind of remove that. And uh, how about the lower dose, like uh, lower than 100 milligrams? And uh, so far, and uh, we won't have any. I cannot see any, but we, we didn't see significant uh, symptoms and uh, some damage. They have some like a double D uh, break, some like, damage. So what I will talk today is lower than 100 milligrees, so lower than 1.1 degree. Uh, so give you some very background, and like, uh, and then I focus on the uh, low dose radiation induced uh, like homesis and adaptive response and their potential uh, used in clinical. So what is the, like a how you say, uh, where we like, can get the low dose radiation exposure? And uh, actually we are daily and exposed by the like nature radiation. And uh, the, the nature results radiation from sky 
when you fly from New York to California, and uh, so you already got some uh, dose exposure. For me, and from here, go to China, go to Beijing, and uh, I already got a lot of exposures. And so, so that can have some gamma rays actually from the, the sky, and uh, we have uh, Rodin, and, uh, Rodin, and so that you can uh, got that in inhalation, and we can got some radioisotope from the contaminated food, and, and also you can, where you live, and the house structure and the quality also determine that, uh, how high and how low the, the radioisotope and uh, release some low dose radiation. And uh, if we leave Kentucky and uh, like, uh, compare the like, uh, Colorado, the, the rock mountain and the uh, like, uh, rocky, and probably we have low background, uh, they have high background. So that is a natural uh, resource. And uh, the major con like come from is man-made the resource. And uh, your work in the clinical side, you know, we have a lot of the application in the clinical use the radioisotope and X-rays. So that is some like a main resource for population or people got the exposures. Like I mentioned, and uh, like uh, depend on where we live, and actually we got exposure at different stores. And uh, I just mentioned that in the Colorado area, actually they have the highest the, uh, background compared to like whole uh, states. And, uh, and you can see from the like, average and 90 uh, milli uh, RAM per year. And the uh, other area, and they have uh, like uh, average only uh, 23. And this area, Michigan area, and they have uh, like about a median. And our Kentucky is low area. So that is uh, like uh, some uh, like a background. And this kind of like high or lower the, like the, the situation is everywhere and like, and they have a lot of like study and this in the following country work on the high background radiation exposure. So, so now I want to talk about the like LET and like what is the LET that is called the linear non-threshold model. That is the principle we use right now for radiation and protection. And they hope you are got the zero exposure. So they make the equipment and the, like uh, the, the environment and uh, as low as possible. But uh, is that is it true or not? And uh, actually we don't know. Why we, I say we don't know? Because the, the, the curve, the, those response curve, we based on the high dose and the, the like impact. And then we make the graph and then we extrapolate go to zero. And uh, so that is we call the, right now is a principal radiation protection all the national and all the like uh, Europe, uh, Japan, and they call the uh, non-linear and uh, uh, linear non-threshold the models, the, as zero, as low as possible. Is that correct? Not. And uh, I want to give you some evidence and then we can discuss that. About 60 or 70 years ago, and uh, like uh, some group work on like animal mouse, Put some of the background and have very low dose uh, the radiations yearly and to exposure and to see how long they can survive. What is the kind of cancer? But uh, for the like uh, longevity, you can see in the female, then uh, normally they can survive less than 800 days. But uh, if they have low dose radiation treatment, not lower than that, even a little bit high, significantly in the, the male uh, mice, you can see the normally they can survive much less than 700 days. But uh, if have a low dose radiation treatment, that uh, survive longer. So they call the life longevity hormesis. What means hormesis? Kind of is a kind of stimulation and the kind of, yeah. So this is a kind of, this, uh, the phenotype. So they call it the longevity and the hormesis. And uh, we, and uh, like, uh, I'm, like lucky, work on like, uh, the, the lab and uh, my uh, supervisor, Dr. Shu Zheng Liu, and interesting the low dose radiation and regarding the DNA repair and the mechanism. So you can see STAR, my PhD, I start working on the radiation biology field and to look for the DNA repair uh, mechanism. But uh, not just uh, like, uh, like my, my PhD lab, and actually in the world, a lot of the uh, group work on this field. And what we found, and in the, the, this is the X, uh, like a, uh, axial, and you can see there's a dose dependent and uh, as agree, and this is the DNA repair enzyme activity. And if I have increased the radiation that uh, 
gain repair activity significantly inhibit. So that is a, like a, easier to understand from the high dose. But uh, I want to talk about the, some error in very small here, the small dose. And you can see, and actually, and lower than 200 milligrams, and not that much, and inhibition. But if lower than, and, uh, than that, around like the 50 and the 75 and the 30, and they have actually a stimulation bump. So we call that is a DNA repair, like uh, the system got the stimulation homesis. And the uh, other group, and the direct check some like DNA repair in them, like for example, RAD50 and NBS1 and uh, MIR11, uh, that is also is a DNA repair uh, uh, component. And you can see that 0 0.5, 0 0.07 milligree, uh, that means 70 milligree. So compare the control, they have an old kind of stimulation. So this uh, direct measure the DNA repair in them and found the 70 milligree and the radiation induced that. And not only DNA repair and also antioxidant levels activity, you can see uh, some group measures the glutathione and after the low dose radiation treatment from the lean size. And the SOD and that is a suproxate and the dismutase and also like a, a total antioxidant potential. And, uh, like a, and again, uh, some group measure glutathione and uh, like a, the lab I work and uh, we are involved some like uh, interesting the nerve 2 and AKT pathway. We found that always like an increase by low dose radiation. Now like uh, this is too, you can follow a lot of the study work on the low dose radiation, nerve 2 and uh, so. So now I have the answer. It's actually it's not a linear and uh, non-threshold model. Actually they have a, like a homesis models. At a very low dose they have a stimulation effect and we call the U-shape curve. So that is something I want to share and today, so we call that a homesis. So what it means is homesis? And like I mentioned, some high back background, the radiation area, and is that got the homesis or not? So in China, and this started like 1979 and collect the, the the, 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 the residence situation, some like uh, live from the high background area and also have uh, more than a million people from the like a normal area. They compare them and they found the cancer incidence actually is uh, not higher than the control levels and uh, actually is uh, a little bit lower. But uh, at that moment, the case and the like a selection, they still didn't see the uh, statistics of difference, but uh, they didn't see increased. So they further follow up and uh, similar year and they do more like precise uh, measurement they found the, the cancer rate and still not increase and actually a little bit reduced. So that is in China, how about in the like, uh, United, uh, United States? So one group in published that in the 2015 and you can see that is from uh, United States. And, uh, Okay, I just mentioned that in the United States and the different areas, they have a, like a different level of the radiation background, right? And they still remember that area is very high. So I give you that. So this study, they use the EPA and uh, like a one database. And they, they know and that area has the high level of radiation. And they, from the like a, uh, other like the date, they, they like a divide the lung cancer four levels from very low and the lower medium and the medium and the very high. And you can see the lung cancer very low state is Arizona is in, in, in here. And uh, Colorado and uh, Idaho and the New Mexico, North Dakota, always belong to the, like, uh, the high radiation background states. And uh, the unfortunately Kentucky, Indiana and the have high lung cancer and we do not have the high radiation background field. So that is a two separate database and map give you the information. So, so this is a, like a summarize you can see in male and the high radiation background field effect and actually they have a lower lung cancer uh, like a, the rate and the female shown the same thing but not like a significant as a male. So they continue further and to work on that. 
So this day, this study and published the last year, and the recruit like cover like the date cover like more than three hundred three thousand the county in the United States, and they include the like three hundred three hundred twenty more than three hundred and twenty million the the, the peoples, and uh, this is like a collect the like a background and the radiation from here and from the like the 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 base like a concrete and the background you are uh, redone and levels and so they look for the longevity and how long they can survive and uh, that area have some high background they have uh, two years longer than the the healthy and the lower radiation background field and uh, they. Calculate and they found the, the lung uh, like uh, survive that probably uh, like predominant because they have a low cancer rate. You can see this is the male and the female, and this is low level radiation and aerial, higher uh, level radiation and the lung cancer. You can see this group higher than that, and uh, this is like a lower than compared to normal level. And the same thing in the female, and uh, this three kind of cancer significant. Lower than the healthy and the Kentucky area, <laughs> give you an example. So that means uh, the high background the radiation in the nature is uh, didn't cause uh, the damage. So that means that like uh, what is mean how misses and uh, in the in the uh, our uh, daily life. So now I want to give you some like uh, information. What is the adaptive response? In the in 1984, and uh, Dr. Sheldon Wolf and uh, he uh, like uh, work in the California and the university and published one uh, science paper and uh, so that is the code of the adaptive response. What he did, he used the human lymphocytes, a culture in the in vitro, and uh, they gave the 1.5 degree radiation treatment and then look for the chromosome damage. That is a significant increase like this. But to another group, before the 1.5 degree high dose, they gave like a small dose used treated cymidine and gave a very small dose, and uh, like uh, in two six hours. And you can see this group, with, this cells with a pre-low dose treatment have less uh, chromosome aberration uh, damage. So this is called uh, and the cytogenetic, cytogenetic adaptive response. So that is published in, in, like in 1984. And um, I, like I mentioned, I started working on the, like uh, as my PhD project, I work on this field. So I go to the animal model. They use a cultured lymphocytes in vitro. I use the C57 mice. Give the like a low dose radiation treatment, uh, 75 milligrams, and give the high dose uh, treatment, uh, like 1.5 degree. And uh, this group, like I mentioned, these two have some damage, but this group significantly increased, uh, like uh, just published. And we, we want to see what has happened for the low dose radiation plus high dose. And we expect probably this one plus this support at that levels. But the, the in fact is not significantly reduced. So that is a, like a, we call that is a, like a cytogenetic adaptive response, like a, what is it published in the 1984 and the individual models. So I use this cartoon and the illustration to explain. So the low dose radiation makes the cells and the resistant adaptive response as resistant to high dose induced the damage. Why? Probably they increase the protein, protect the proteins, increase the DNA repair capacity, and increase the antioxidant functions. So that makes the cells adapt more resistant for the second challenge. So after that, and I moved to Canada and uh, Western Ontario, and uh, I got the invitation to ask me to uh, write a review for the, this field. So that, that year is already like nine years after I published my work. So one like, a component, one section I specifically discussed, can we use the like, adaptive response or homesis, potentially use a clinical? And uh, so this is my questions. So now I want to move some like uh, uh, my uh, like uh, work and also like uh, combine uh, literature, give you some idea. So first I ask, we know the low dose radiation can stimulate the uh, like DNA repair and can uh, stimulate the cell's proliferation. 
And is that is a go to in vivo really have some useful or a beneficial impact for the whole bodies. And we first we check the bone marrow cells are growing and got low dose radiation stimulate. But uh, we don't know that stimulate the uh, like bone marrow cells is function normal or not because that is stimulated by radiation. So what we did, we first year, like I set up the uh, back C uh, female mice gave them a high dose radiation. That actually is called a laser dose and gave the whole body exposure. So what happened to that mice? And that will be killed all the like, lymphocytes or bone marrow cells. So a couple of days later, they won't have a new blood, new lymphocytes, new neutrophil, new like, T or B uh, uh, like immune cells. So that will be quickly lose that and probably two weeks or 10 days will die. So I will use another like a male mask, give the low dose radiation treatment. Want to see that stimulate the lymphocytes or bone marrow cells is that can really function normal to rescue, to rescue for the recipient if like as a donor. So we give the like five. And she then her mom pick it up from her own. And her mom picked her up from our home. Don't worry about that, right? Yeah. Okay, and so we have a, like a fire group as a, like a donor. One is control. We don't have any radiation chemical treatment. One is a 75 milligram radiation treatment. Another that is a, like a, a granular uh, colony. Or the people uh, that we got that yesterday. Like a factor. So that is yeah, kind of the end of uh, gross factor for like a clinical or like a used bone marrow uh, transplantation stimulated the bone marrow cells growing. And the uh, standard protocol, they use 300. So we set up a one, like a one half dose group. One is uh, like a standard group. And uh, later we have the low, low dose radiation plus the half dose. We want to see how they combined. And then we gave the different group and a certain amount of the uh, cells to the recipients. You can see when we look for the blood cells for the recipients, if control, they just received the normal mass. And to see, and the four days, they have a certain amount of the cells because from the normal cells, but that is not that much, like enough to keep the continual persistent high levels. You can see from the day four, day seven, day 10, and the significantly reduced. But if we have low dose radiation treatment, the donor have the more stem cells, make the cells can catch up. And uh, like uh, if the standard dose, you can see at the 14 days, that basically very normal, make the mice are like very healthy. And if half dose and the same thing like a low dose radiation, if we plus low dose radiation on half dose growth factor, and you can see basically catch up the like a full dose the growth like a sector. So that means that the stem cell is working very well. So we, Com com compare the, like uh, we call it a colony in the spleen. You know, our immuno beta cells, B cells, and the, through the spleen and uh, form the colony and the mature and go to the like a uh, circulation. If we give us like a laser dose, kill all the lymphocytes, and you can see the spleen very smooth and uh, shiny, don't have the nodule inside because no B lymphocytes. But if you have low dose radiation, you can see the nodule come, come back. And you can see if the gross factor and if the plus, you can see the spleen and become like have some uh, full cell and have new uh, immuno cells and can mature and go to the uh, circulation. And uh, when we look for the animal survival, you can see the control, the like 10 mice have like eight die, only have two survive. But the low dose radiation keep that uh, like 80% survive. And the same thing, the full dose can keep the 100% the survive. And if we low dose radiation plus half dose, basically very, very good and protect the animal so well. So that confirmed the low dose radiation stimulated the uh, bone marrow cells, stem cells is working very well. And another group use uh, like a, something different from our uh, like protocol. They make the mice have the ligation for the make the limb and the, like ischemia. I won't have the blood. You can see that. And then they uh, like, like separate two group, one and uh, give the radiation, low dose radiation treatment, and another without low dose radiation treatment. And uh, you can compare 
this is blood flow normally on the like this, but uh, when they have ligation, they do not have blood flow on both group. But uh, at uh, 15 days without uh, like uh, uh, the low dose radiation treatment, they have a tiny and uh, the blood and uh, flow in and uh, new blood formation and uh, have. But if have low dose radiation treatment, you can see the normally blood and the flow go to the the, the pore, and so that is a uh, very and recover very well. And when you look for the more detailed morphology, you can see more vessel and formation and uh, like some like uh, quantity date and also shown that more like uh, like re recovery regeneration and uh, and geogenesis. So that means from different slides, we, we really confirm that stem cells mobilized by low dose radiation is function normal and uh, useful. So can we use the protocol to clinical now? No. The answer is no. And because we only focus on one like measurement, look, look for the normal cells for marrow cells, but probably that also stimulates some like your potential bad cells and like a kind of the tumor stem cells. If the low dose radiation also have that stimulation effect, hormesis effect, probably increase the cancer risk. So we have to study is that really cause some same like a proliferation phenomena or not. So we use a different kind of cancer cells and also compare the like normal cells. And we want to see if that have same pattern profile or capacity and compare the normal cells, what we found in the bone marrow systems. So for example, we use a, and from the lung and the cancer and the liver cancer and the lung and the normal cells and the liver normal cells to do this experiment and example. So we gave them in vitro and the incubate and gave them different doses, 25, 50, 75, 100, and 200. And the 1,000 kind of is a, like a laser damage dose to indicate that the radiation is correct and the cell line, the normal response. And for the like a, a normal cells, and you can see this is a normal lung fibroblast. And this, uh, this is a control and in here, and you can see the high dose, one, one gray kill a lot of cells, and from the total cells that's significantly lower, but uh, the other low dose radiation, the curve and the f growing faster compared to the control. And the high dose inhibit, so that is uh, like confirmed the normal cells really shown the homeostasis stimulation effect. But in, you can see the lung the tumor cells, and this is the, uh, the blue is here, control, and the high dose killed, inhibit, but the small dose not a stimulate. And the same level, even lower, not like here and up, higher than this control. So other liver and the normal uh, like cancer, the same thing, and uh, the normal cells, and you can control high dose and the small dose increase higher than the control. But here, only high dose kills the cells, not growing. So that means the in vitro at least is not and the same normal cells and the tumor cells. How about in vivo? And uh, because the in vitro situation not re represented in vivo. So m we make that the tumor very nice and uh, we gave it like a, like a, gave the low dose radiation treatment and we look for the, the growing and the speed and you can see, and that is a without a low dose radiation and uh, 20 days and that large, and the, that weight and like this, and the size and the low dose radiation, not like further growing and very tiny and the inhibition, at least not stimulate in the tumors. So confirm our in vitro and the, like results. So we published that and uh, like, like 2008. And uh, meanwhile, and the other group and then like a couple of years later, they also found the normal and the tumor and shown the difference. And uh, even now, and like, like uh, this year, they still have some group confirm our date and they are uh, further to look for what is the mechanism. So this look like, and uh, this is the, they call the graph abstract. And basically they use a, a lung and the tumor cells, this color, and the normal lung and the, like a, uh, this tumor and this uh, normal lung. And you can see they have a, like a cell growing and model and they also look for the DNA repair model. Well, basically, you can see this is the normal cells, MRC, like the same cell line we have. And this is the, the, like a lung tumor cells. 
and this uh, blue is uh, like a two grid and the high dose and the total cell number decreases definitely. But uh, if before the two grid have a 75 milligram and that go back to same normal levels and this normal cells and the same thing they use two uh, normal cells two uh, and, uh, like, uh, and the tumor cells and one tumor what, what this is uh, like a uh, the normal and this tumors and the two time points and you can see the normal cells show the adaptive response protect and like this even like a two time point but uh, the tumor cells not protect that much you can see not a, a difference and they also uh, like um, look for the dose levels and the low dose radiation induced the adaptive response can tolerate two degree four degree but cannot tolerate too much six degree because uh, different those cause cell deaths are different because two degree probably more apoptotic cell deaths so that need some signal pathway you can have a repair enzyme and can can work that six degree you kill everything don't have the chance to repair to to define and that causes necrosis so you can see that have a dose range and uh, like limitations and the one they look for the the this is a one kind of the DNA repair and marker and the, the normal cells you can see the significant difference and the 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 right is like a, a like a 75 milligram pre-exposure caused the tolerant and high dose induced damage and so that is they gave the conclusion is the DNA repair and the system evolved. And uh, recently they have a, a review, they talk about the like a difference, and they, they think is the tumors, usually we know P53 mutation, because P53, why we discover the P53? Because that is tumor suppressor gene. One because the P53 mutation and either happen the cancers. So most cancers have a P53 mutations. So low dose radiation, if exposure to the tumor cells because they don't have p53 gene so they don't show the adaptive response they don't show the, the portfolio mechanism so that is a like continually we dig out the mechanism why the normal cells have the adaptive response hormesis but not tumor cells so, so that we continue publish the, and that is the kind of work and uh, so we we try to to see Okay, and uh, the tumor do not have a homeostasis without the mechanism. How about the, like, uh, the adaptive response? If we like, uh, give the tumor treatment, two degree and two degree, but uh, if the tumor cells, we, we use a low dose radiation and also make the tumor show the uh, adaptive response and what's going on. So actually it's not. And uh, so this group, we have low dose radiation and plus high dose, and this is high dose. And we calculation to look for the tumor inhibition and in here you can see control and the tumor no inhibition and the normally growing and the low dose radiation a little bit alone a little bit of inhibition like the curve we found but if high dose we have radiation therapy kills the tumor cells so that's normal they have some inhibition but low dose radiation plus high dose we are not expect we are not like we won't like they have some reduce the inhibition rate but actually we see not to reduce the inhibition rate, actually it's good. Hyper the like a, a, a tumor cells being killed. So, so we have a two kinds of uh, cell line and uh, like uh, we shown the same date, uh, just a different, a little bit like uh, the uh, difference. And, uh, but this is the nude mass, like uh, I give you an example in the photo. But uh, what happened in the normal mass? You can see this is the, Normal mass C57 and BL6 gene, and you can see this uh, D2 inhibited that much. But if you have a pre low dose radiation treatment, significantly inhibited. And what we learn, and we learn and in here, and for the nude mice, they have uh, enhanced the radiation therapy in fact, but uh, from 10 to 17, not that much. But in the white type, white type mice, and that significantly enhanced like about 30, more than 30. What is the difference between the nude mice with the white type mice? Because the C57 mice, they have an immune function. Nude mice, they don't won't have an immune function. Probably low dose radiation also enhance, stimulate the immune function to kill the, the tumors. So it does low dose radiation really stimulate the anti-tumor immune function. And actually they have a lot of publication 
confirm that low dose radiation can stimulate anti tumor immunofunction and inhibit the like a tumor metastasis. And they continue to have this like a publication in this field. So now I can use, based on our um, research, we can make the conclusion we can use low dose radiation, high, the high dose or chemical, like a chemo uh, cancer drug to therapy because that won't affect the sensitivity, won't affect the killing effect. Actually, the low dose radiation can stimulate the immunofunction to help the after the radiation probably kills, the, remove the residue of tumor cells. And also, the low dose radiation can make the normal tissue have the adaptive response, make the normal tissue more tolerant. And like at the beginning, I mentioned, we need to calculate the tolerant, normal tissue tolerance dose. So that means we are use 20 degree and can kill more, and also make the normal tissue have a more like a, against a strong, probably you can increase the therapy, therapy dose, go to 25 or go to 30, because the, the, we have the adaptive response make the normal tissue more resistant. So that is uh, some like uh, of the tumors, and we also have some other interesting uh, study for for the like uh, potential or clinical use the low dose radiation stuff. Okay, and uh, the low dose radiation and can use uh, like a diabetes research. So like in two thousand eight, I start ask this question: Can we use this for the diabetes research? And uh, why I look for the literature and the, in Japan, there are already several publications there. They found that low dose radiation can prevent the STZ or uh, alloxin induced uh, diabetes. And because that is, uh, makes sense, uh, the low dose radiation can make the individual against for radiation, of course, also against for the chemical induced diabetes. But that is uh, not uh, like that excited and also not uh, applicable because we cannot give the, the people low dose radiation and tell them, I can help you to prevent you become diabetes. Right, but uh, if you are already diabetes, that is different. Diabetes, you have to have a complication. Can we use a low dose radiation, non-invasive method to prevent diabetic complication? So that is my interest, and I look for the different kind of organs. So, for example, we use that like a uh, the, like a STZ mouse model, make that become diabetes, and then give the low dose radiation treatment and waiting four months and we look for the kidney function and protection. And basically we found that this is like in the before and the, the diabetes and the, and the group supposed to have a low dose radiation, they are same and the protein urine. That one, like this group, and like 14 weeks later, this group significantly increased the protein urine. So that means the kidney function decreased. But if you have a low dose radiation, can hold postpone that happen or reduce that severity. And all the other measurements have shown the same pattern. You can see the diabetes and from molecular level, inflammation level, antioxidant or uh, oxidative damage level shown the significant increase in diabetes group, but not in the group with low dose radiation. So this is uh, and the same model that we work on in heart and basically the same pattern we found. And you can see the cardiac enzyme in the blood, diabetes group significantly increased, and the low dose radiation can uh, reduce that phenotype. And the other like a student and uh, want to use, okay, you are working heart and the kidney, I want to work about the like, testes, the reproductive systems. They use the rat and the difference model and at a different time, and uh, they found diabetes caused a, a lot of the uh, germ cells die and the apoptotic cell deaths. But if you have low dose radiation, also reduce the diabetes causes the male germ cells and uh, dies. And, uh, and the other students say, okay, you are looking for the like, uh, prevention, okay, with like, uh, uh, the radiation um, beginning uh, after, uh, like, uh, once after become diabetes. But I want to look for the therapy and uh, like, uh, value. And so make the diabetes and let diabetes alone for like 60 days and basically two months. That means that the, the rat already have the microcirculation problems and then make the uh, wood and to see the recover. Normal mice and the 14 days and the 15 days, they can 100% recover by themselves spontaneously. But uh, diabetes 
and the 15 days not cover and still left open because the microcirculation have problem. But if after the wood healing and you gave the like a, a low dose radiation, you can see significant healing and much better. And the, the shape and the color also is good. And uh, you can see they found the stem cells and uh, mobilized and by low dose radiation to help the um, like the wood healing process. And they continue really confirm that the stem cells pathway through the SDF pathway. So that confirm low dose radiation can place multiple roles and prevent diabetes formation and prevent diabetes cause the complications. So that is uh, our conclusions. So, and uh, our like a preclinical model or other uh, publication also uses the uh, uh, animal model. Is that supported by clinical evidence? And I give you a couple of the clinical evidence. So in Japan, and they have a, a, like a two case, and they found they use a radon and the therapy and can help the diabetes. So one patient they cause like some other problems, and but when they go to the clinical, they found that they become diabetes, and they use like usually like a diabetic medicine and but it doesn't work, and they quit. They go to the radon room and the therapeutic room, and for two months, and eventually you can see that the significant reduced and the uh, hemoglobin from like uh, this is the beginning of January in 2018, and uh, two months later reduced, and uh, like uh, in the only in one year, so the hemoglobin can reduce that, that level and uh, very close with the normal already. So that is a uh, go to the redon, the, like a uh, cave, and uh, they have some therapy. So this is like a uh, diabetes, uh, case one, and another case is also is a female and uh, like uh, 69 years old, and they have some other problems they call the, uh, the skin disease and the rash. And they use that kind of like, a, like medicine and it doesn't help that much and make that itchy and the problem. So that is, a, and they quit and also go to the like a, a redon and the therapy uh, treatment. And so a couple of months later and it got significant and reduced. This patient already have some cardiac dysfunction kind of cardiomyopathy and uh, for the results, you can see the cardiac enzyme from very high and become like reduced, and the hemoglobin from the like 9.8 become 7.1, and so the glucose also is reduced. So this side not only like a therapy for the skin and like autoimmune disease, and also like a cardiac function got like reduced, prevention improved, and also like a like a blood glucose got improved. So they also have a focus cancers, but that is like a, and also some like a kind of like a information, and I won't give you too much information. So that is a kind of the cancer and the marker and also got you know, like a, improved. So, and that is that happened in Japan, and how about American? And actually the border and the Montana, and they have the, the cave. And they open, and they also attract a lot of the uh, the people working there for the uh, joint uh, like pain like a uh, uh, and so that is a, you see, and they are joint and <laughs> and they got a therapy, and so that is the the new uh, like a comments and for this uh, like uh, the volleyball and the therapy for for the uh, arthritis. and uh, even more interesting for the like senior people and in Canada. And the first also Dr. Jerry Carter, and I know him very well. And he is like a, like a radiation biology, and uh, he has one friend, and his wife, and got Alzheimer's, and use all the methods not to improve, worse and worse. And he talked, uh, you, you, talk, you do the research, you do the homicides and radiation, and uh, can you, like, uh, because of his wife uh, do not have any uh, other method to, to, to kill, to like a therapy. So ask the hospital and they provide the potential to give you a CT treatment and kind of the whole body CT and that is something around the 39 and 40 milligree and kind of like 50 milligree. So they give it like time, like you can see several times and the patient significantly like improved and have the like kind of the like willing to eat pizza when you call her name and response very well. 
So that makes the, the husband very happy. Actually, the husband has the Parkinson disease. And when he saw the wife and got that much improvement, and he asked the doctor give himself and do the Parkinson treatment. And so they want to follow up to see what's going on. And they also, like this year, they have a commentary regarding the, the low dose radiation for therapy. And actually, several groups that are clinical trial, and you can see they use radiation to treat the r channels disease. But uh, the different groups, they use the dose different, and uh, you can see the dose are like separate. But uh, we will see and what's going on. So last, and the COVID-19, uh, we know that is terrible. But especially at the beginning. So last year I searched and the COVID 19 low dose ready therapy, you can see 2001, they already have a more than like 40 studies to work on that. And this year they still continue. And basically, and you do not have an efficient method. And in fact, the method at like the past two years, not right now, right now we have the new medicine. And actually, it's very, very quick. And you, you got the like a very, like a, like a vaccine and uh, they change they very faster. So, and also like uh, some countries do not have the vaccine. So the low dose radiation is uh, like one very good approach. And uh, why? And because they have a history use the low dose radiation treated the pneumonia. And this is, uh, they already have the summary and in the past, they use the low dose radiation treated the pneumonia and very success and uh, not that much like side effects. So this is like a star and from the like a first case and that is a, and from, uh, come from the, uh, German, Germany. And so this is a 64 years old and uh, they have the like a progression like a fin, uh, uh, syndrome and the COVID-19 and they start to use low dose radiation actually got some uh, significant improved. And uh, so now you can see and uh, how more and more the clinical trial and the, the, like uh, the, they start to use low dose radiation treatment, and especially other countries, they do not have that many uh, uh, vaccines. Basically, that is uh, like a feasible and safe the dose, and uh, that can uh, is non invasive and very convenient. And uh, some like areas they do not have that like a uh, facility and also available. So last year, because I'm interested in that, and I also work with the Neil and the Dump, uh, Dumpler and like how the reviewer to summarize how come the low dose radiation can treat the like COVID-19. Basically, they have a three field. One is the low dose radiation that causes adaptive response, help your tissue got the tolerant and reduce the inflammation cause the damage. And also like the balance the antioxidant like function and reduces the oxidative stress. And also the immuno and the function got like a to shut down the, the storm, uh, uh, like a, a cytokine storm, and kind of uh, have strong, like a good uh, immune functions. So that is uh, like a uh, low dose radiation field. And uh, before I thought, oh, even that works, and the, the heavy equipment doesn't help, and uh, so it's probably difficult to apply. But uh, you see, they already have uh, like, a, like a new uh, machine, and uh, like a code treat the COVID-19 and so available. This removable and the small just go to the, you know, some the like patient diet place, yeah. So I want to stop here and uh, thanks my group. Oh, sorry, I a little longer, yeah. And this is a, a code and the, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And, uh, Oh, someone said nice review. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, someone asked me and uh, nice uh, like a talk and uh, uh, review for low dose radiation and uh, some uh, like same uh, impact for the laser and the laser for the uh, ulcer and uh, tre treatment and basically have same impact because that is also uh, the local regional. But for the other like a field, like inside, too deep, and the laser uh, is doesn't help, not like a low dose radiation. Yeah. Oh, they asked me is that low dose radiation can reduce the body weight? Uh, I know one to, to check that. <laughs> Exercise is better than low dose radiation. <laughs> Or 
Uh, so, what was the mechanism? Matter has to be smaller area. Um, I think that is a, like a very big question, and uh, like a, they only have, in the human they only have the two case and report, but from the animal model, we think that is a stimulated insulin function because I work on the AKT, so that is a kind of a sensitizer insulin function to help your like a glucose and uh, useful uh, utilized. Like I use STZ models as type one and. Uh, and and something like that, there are two, and there are also uh, up regulate a, a lot of the mechanism. So, and there, meanwhile, they also have to turn on some antioxidant functions. You have AGE and the, glico, uh, the hemoglobin that is a glycate. AGE causes a lot of the uh, damage through the inflammation and uh, like oxidative damage. And uh, antioxidant, metrocyanin and the NER2 can, can kind of protect the uh, and oxidative stress damage. So that is a, a, a second way to protect. And the low dose radiation also can kind of balance your body's immune functions. And for do not have a kind of a cytokine storm go to the damaged organs to clean, but actually they have some good inflammation, good macrophage, and to reduce the chronic complications. And for the hemoglobin, that's the same thing because your insulin Glucose reduced and that you uh, gradually and to reduce the like uh, glycated proteins. And uh, you have some like uh, I mentioned, uh, like uh, zinc and or like uh, antioxidant probably can help you to remove the glycated uh, proteins uh, to decrease. So, but uh, the, like the, the wound model, mm -hmm. so it gives radiation. Oh. Uh, for the like a mouse and the, like a rat, we basically we give whole bodies. But in the human, yeah, in humans we can because you have big like enough and you can regional exposure. For mouse and too small for rat, and pro, at least half the bodies exposure. Yeah, because the big machine and uh, not that easy to handle very small area. But uh, whole body and as long as those lower whole body actually is better than local regional because that can mobilize your stem cells to repair your system and also turn on some like a antioxidant function and like a 40 milligree and kind of CT scan your whole body, give your whole body up, up regulate and defense system, like the R-TEMS disease for the patients. And so for her and like a basically monthly or every two months have one dose, so that is really help her to, to Improves that and symptoms. Oh, and uh, uh, the the audience from the virtual and the online ask me, what is your question? Yeah, and uh, the question is uh, ask me how the low dose radiation uh, improves the com diabetic complication. So I explained to have a three mechanism, one is uh, like an immune system, one is an uh, uh, antioxidant repair uh, uh, mechanism, and also one insulin sensitizing functions. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you.